to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. The place for all things guitar and gear. Here are your hosts, Chris, Jesse, and Robert. Welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure, your fortnightly webcast for all things guitar and gear. I'm Chris, and tonight we have Jesse. Hello. And... Uh, we need to change our intro music so we can get Robert's name out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Is Robert not coming into the party anymore? <laughs> well, I think he, he, he and I talked about having a second intro music set up so that, uh, uh, that, you know, when he's not around, we could just play that. So all of our listeners are probably wondering, who's this Robert guy and why isn't he? Why are there three hosts? Well, we actually have two hosts. And, Robert uh, is our imaginary friend. <laughs> he's, our, he's our shared uh, delusion. <laughs> yes, there we go. Shared, our shared guitar delusional friend, yes. So uh, anyway, what have you been up to this week, Jesse? So, uh, well, playing a little bit of B.B. King, <laughs> oh, yes. um, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, Hummingbird, Thrill is Gone, and playing along with some of the live stuff is just kind of fun the um the cook county jail uh gig and mm-hmm. the uh live at the regal is that okay the, yeah, the, yeah. Um, i forget how old that one is that's like from the 60s i think uh but known to be a really good show and it was it's pretty rollicking <laughs> so <laughs> um yeah and then also um a little bit of jazz some uh the girl from ipanema i was learning that's a pretty basic song actually and autumn lee as i was kind of revisiting that and Trying to get my head around like some chord melody, which I'm absolutely horrendous at, but that's okay. So, what have you been doing, Chris? Well, let's see. I have uh, been working on "Over the Hills and Far Away." That Sweet. is my song of the summer, and I and think a good one know, it is. Yeah, you know, two summers ago, um, my song of the summer was um, "You Shook Me All Night Long," mm-hmm. right? And that was great. It was like spot on. The difficulty level where I was at the time was perfect. And it just spent a summer sort of digging into the song. Mm-hmm. And of course, Over the Hills and Far Away is a much more complicated song. Yeah. You know, because okay. there's lots of things going on. I mean, there's actually, I think there's like three electric guitars and an acoustic guitar when all is said and done. Yeah. And um, sometimes that third electric guitar, for example, just plays like a harmonized note, mm-hmm. you know? And you have your lead and you have your rhythm and then the acoustic doing stuff in the background. And so I am, you know, picking and choosing the parts that I that are really interesting. It's going to be fun to play. Right. So, you know, the the acoustic intro and then after I get through that intro business, probably um, what I'm doing is dropping to, uh, you know, the lead guitar. Mm hmm. And then, you know, going through that for a while, getting to part of the solo and then stopping the solo and keep picking up another guitar part, you know, part of the way through the lead guitar solo and just sort of mixing and matching. And when I'm done, I'll ha- I'll be able to play through the whole song, but I won't be playing through just one guitar part. Right. Because that's no fun. I mean, if you play by yourself in a room, you, I'm just going to sit here and do nothing while I wait until guitar two kicks in. <laughs> you know? Right. I mean, you don't want to do that. So, uh, yeah, complex um, song for me, uh, a lot of very interesting parts and just a nice, getting back to dissecting a song which i haven't done in a while yeah so it feels good to get back there i kind of looking at my repertoire list though and i'm a little bit depressed on how um short it should never be depressing (laughs) short it is my i think i have a record for the lowest ratio of years playing to (laughs) repertory (laughs) because the vast bulk of what i I noodle around. I play with little exercises and scales and stuff like that. Not that I never learn a new song, but it has never, ever been a big deal. I I haven't written stuff since like 2006, (laughs) you know, but I mean, uh, but it's always been sort of like a rather create something or rather just record stuff or whatever, rather than just learn, 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 learn all these songs I can play, which makes me kind of crap at parties. <laughs> you know, everybody's also like, oh, let's play a song. And it's like, well, you do it and I'll watch you. And by the second verse, I'll be able to play along. <laughs> right. I'll just improvise over top. I'll just tell me the key. And, kind and of. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, ah, uh, but yeah. that's okay. It's, it's whatever you want to get out of it, you know? I mean, nobody really – I shouldn't say this because maybe the greatest players out there like know the whole backlog of stuff, you know. But you wonder. It's like, OK, how much of the classic rock or, or whatever the genre is, you know, basic repertory does 
Eddie Van Halen or Ingve Malmsteen or Angus Young or, you know, how much, how much do those guys know? I don't know. I don't know. Because nobody ever asked, you know, Eddie to play something else. They asked him to play Van Halen songs. <laughs> right, right. I'm so, sure there's classics he knows that are outside. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, and sure. the fact is, I mean, most of the time you'll see interviews where they'll be like, yeah, I copped every lick off of, you know, that every clapped and ever played or whatever it was before them. Right. But right. uh but that's not what they're known for. And it's not, so it's kind of like, well, there's other people playing those songs. So <laughs> I don't have to. And I don't have the patience to get together and practice with the band enough to actually go out and play anything anyway. Right, <laughs> so. right. Yes. I like just entertaining myself and my dog. Pretty you know? much. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, well, you know, you spoke about recording. I'm working on recording with a, a friend. I'm working on recording a song. Mm-hmm. I said I wanted to record two songs this summer. I'm going to count this as one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, because why not? He wrote it. I'm just going to count it, and I'll work on composing my own stuff as well. Mm-hmm. And um, the other thing I've been working on since our last recording is I just tonight learned how to restring a classic guitar. Classic guitar. Oh, sweet. And I give a shout out to Donnie, the, one of the guitar uh, techs at Robert M. Sides here in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. He was super patient, and he walked me through the whole process of mm-hmm. you know this is how you do. You tie the string around the bridge, and because it was nothing like I thought it was going to be. Yeah, and he talked to me about you know feeding the string through the the peg hole and how to take care of um, uh, winding so that you know the strings catch properly and all these things. And mm-hmm. so he yeah, he was awesome. He did a great job with me tonight, and I feel fairly confident that if I had to right now, I could restring that classical guitar. Oh yeah. Yeah. You can see how the windings are in that in the tie at the bridge. Yeah. Yeah. That, are they all tied the same or are they different between the nylon and the, the silk and steel ones? Well, I got this brand of guitar string and I do not remember what it's called, but it's not the, the, the those three strings are not the plain nylon. Only the low E or the high E, excuse me, is the uh, the high what am I saying? I'm sorry. The high three strings are mm-hmm. not exposed nylon except for the E. The oh. others are not. So really? they grab a little better. Yeah. Yeah. And I cannot remember the name. I'll have to, next time we record, I'll have to tell you the, the name brand because I cannot remember. It didn't mean anything to me. They were kind of expensive. They but are. Yeah. He said that yeah. it would last a very long time. He's like, you know, you can get at least six months. And if you're not playing this thing all the time, probably longer out of these strings. Yeah. You'll get years out of them like no, most people do. <laughs> yeah. And that's my plan. You know, that's unless my you plan. play the guitar a lot, you know. Yeah. And, and I'll probably at most play it once a week. I think the next couple of weeks I'll pick it up and tune it every day because he said it could take a couple of weeks for the tuning to really set in. They stretch. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, actually, I just noticed um, he restrung it. I put the uh, I put the guitar in my car during my lesson, mm-hmm. and I took my Paul in for my lesson. And um, uh, when I got home, everything was at least a whole step down. Oh yeah, yeah, at least some of it was like a step and a half, two yeah, steps. Yeah, there was. Like, I was like, wow, you know, it's going to take some TLC to get these things to stretch and hold their uh, their tune. Absolutely, but it's a it totally definitely... different animal that classical guitar. Yeah. So I'm hoping to use it to build up, you know, some finger picking skills, you know, just to mess around a little bit and just have fun with it. And, sure. You know, and if I decide that, you know, after a few months, I'm not playing this thing at all. Maybe I'll just, I'll get rid of it. But uh, until then, it's guitar number 11. <laughs> That's sweet. Yeah. <laughs> You're catching up. Oh, my gosh. Uh, well, you know, that was a gift. We you may know. even out, you know, if I sell a few. It's, uh, That's it's the only good. way we're going to even out. Yeah. Short term, in the short term, know. yeah. Know. We'll see. So uh, I see you got your baby in the back. I do. Yes, yeah. yes. She is home now. So it, it's <laughs> this has been a long, strange trip. <laughs> it has. Um, yeah. So I had the nut replaced because uh, when I had it refretted with steel strings, um, I could swear it played really well at the time. Um, it's hard to remember because, you know, you get something new and it feels good and it's, you know, it plays well. And, uh, maybe I was just excited at the time. I don't, I don't know, but I think the G string actually wore it's, uh, wore the slot down very quickly. It was less than a year. And so that it started buzzing, uh, open. So I went through a bunch of stuff thinking maybe I could, um, put a locking nut on a Floyd Rose that didn't work because it wasn't enough places to put the, uh, uh, the screws. 
the way a Floyd, where the screw uh, holes are. And okay, so I uh, took it uh, to a shop to have uh, another nut put on. When it got back, it, I still wasn't happy with the nut. It was just low. And I know like most luthiers like a really low action at the nut, you know. But in this case, um, at least one of the strings buzzed more open than it did fretted at the first or, and, and second fret. So I, that's not my thing. I, I don't want it like that. So <laughs> I got a, a nut, a Graph Tech um, nut that was sized for that guitar. And I started sanding it down. The problem is I started sanding it down when I was tired and at one in the morning. <laughs> Right, right, right. Nothing good happens after midnight. <laughs> and I only had one nut. This is terrible, you know? I'm like, Ugh. So I sanded it too low. And uh, yeah, you can shim it and you can do all this, but I figure, all right, I'm just going to order two more because <laughs> you can get them for eight bucks off eBay. So I did that. They came in. And this time I uh, just a little bit of sanding, you know, and I marked it with like a Sharpie, a little yeah. bit of sanding. OK, where am I? You know, I checked that thing all the time um, and I got it pretty good. It's slightly high, probably about where most uh, factory nuts are, which is generally a little high because they don't want to, you know, risk going too low and having a buzz. Um, and I think that'll give it a little bit of leeway in case the strings wear in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see how it goes. And if uh, with the next string change, it, it seems a little high, maybe I'll just take a little bit more off being very careful when I do so. <laughs> a little bit at a time. Check it. Yep. Yeah. So so it plays well. And uh, I'm excited. So now I just got to wire up the pickups because I put different pickups in with um, some Seymour Duncan. In fact, I have a different model right here I can show you. This is a... For those uh, on the audio podcast, I'm showing stuff to the camera, so I apologize. But I'm describing a Seymour Duncan triple shot ring. It's got two micro switches here. So a humbucker can be wired parallel series, one coil on, the other coil on, all, all kinds of options. Um, so I'm going to wire that thing up really fancy. And we'll go from there. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. When I'm done with that, then my second guitar, I'm going to replace the pickups, uh, at least two of the pickups. I have There are two singles and a humbucker, and the singles are really high output um, SS, they're Duncan SSL, I can't remember what they are, fives or sixes, I think, the higher output ones. And so, um, but they're kind of too hot. They want them to balance with the humbucker. But I don't want that. I'd rather have like a lower output, glassier sort of sound. So I got the um, sort of imported Duncan, Duncan design version, which is a lower output one. And I'm surprised. These things are really well made. Uh, aiming at the camera again. So <laughs> here's a single coil pickup. They have a nice um, shield tape around. Mm -hmm. Really they seem to be very well made. And, uh, and on forums and stuff, you'll, people generally have a pretty high opinion of these. Um, so even though it's not an American made pickup, it's like, I could not pass up $30 for a loaded pick guard with three of these things in. I mean, yes. Ten bucks and I was the beneficiary of the pick guard. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, Cause I don't yeah. have a strat to put it on anyway. Right. <laughs> so, have at it. Yeah, absolutely. So, Another piece for the, the project guitar, the one day project guitar. Indeed. Where, indeed. Yeah. So Can't I really have. I have enough to keep me busy here for a while with the <laughs> wiring. <laughs> That's good. That's good, though. Yeah, I got to strategize for a project guitar one of these days. You know, how, how do I want to do it? Do I want to go with, like, you know, Warmoth and get the body and the neck? Or do I want to do, like, uh, one of these kits, like Grizzly Cells? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, because the Tele was a Grizzly kit, and that was pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know, it had a little warning on it that, you know, you have to have some kind of competency with woodworking in order to do this. <laughs> Turns out you don't, because I was able to put one together and you play it. So, uh, you know. <laughs> As it happens. <laughs> yeah. Turns out the, uh, the amount of woodworking skill is totally overestimated by the instructor. That's um, just the disclaimer. So, like, if you chop the neck in half, it's not right. our fault. <laughs> yes, right. right, right. So, I know not to cut into the neck. I know that much. <laughs> but. Yeah, you know, it's it's good to have this parts laying around because it's always there's always a project, you mm -hmm. know, it's be done, and I got to do some repair work on my not really repair, but some setup work on my Strat because it's a little buzzy, and and every once in a while, you know, I'm practicing playing guitar, I'm like, oh, it's to tweak that. In fact, the telly I have up there in the middle, um, that's a high maintenance girl, I tell you. Yeah. Yeah, I just had to adjust the neck again. I've adjusted that neck on that guitar more than any other guitar I've ever owned. Wow. 
Yeah. I mean, tis the season right now. We've we've had a very wet May. It's like the wettest on record here in Pennsylvania. Yeah. And um and I think things are moving, you know. But Italy is I would have thought that'd be like pretty rock solid, you know. It's all the time. I mean, you know, I was playing, I was like, dang, these strings feel really low. Even and I had like a fairly low action, you know, I was like, this is not yeah. this is low. And so I checked the neck and of course it was straight. Rigid straight. Yeah. Oh, we got to put some relief in that neck in order for this to play well. And so break out the, uh, you know, the hex keys and start turning. And yeah, it's a relief in that neck. And I, it took a good quarter turn. Wow. Yeah. I've been pretty lucky. I mean, I've, I think I've tweaked a couple of these, but like even the Parkers, like they have paper thin necks. They're like, um, that's not a big brand. So any of you out, the listeners out there are familiar with like the Ibanez Wizard. I mean, that's the kind of thin neck we're talking about. And uh, they haven't moved much. I mean, I, the one, I think I turned it oh, like a 16th of a turn. It was really just a little tweak. Um, so, yeah, lucking out with that. Yeah. And, you know, I would recommend uh, for listeners who are, are maybe newer to playing guitar and you're like, oh, I don't know if I'd ever want to, you know, touch that magic truss rod. I was there once, too, you know, totally terrified of the truss rod because, like, you know, I do not want to mess my guitar up. So it's no big deal. Have at it. Have at it. <laughs> Keep it an eighth, maybe a quarter of a turn at a time, but I'd say keep it to an eighth of a turn, unless you have like a real high maintenance telly like mine, eighth of a turn at a time. Yeah. And uh and another option too is to 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 go onto eBay and find yourself like a fifty dollar or seventy dollar squire. Yeah. And use that as your experimental thing. That's a know? good point. You yeah. know, because you can get it you know pretty inexpensive. It's probably gonna play great. And it's got all the working parts, so I mean, you know. Exactly, and so you can you can you can test the tweaks and get yourself a feel of, and, and use that as your guitar to learn how to set a guitar up. Absolutely, and you know, uh, there's all kinds of stuff out there. Go search on on the web, certainly YouTube. There's video, you know, how to this and that, and um, some of them are really well done. So um, yeah, just I go and have book, at it. Uh, I think it's called How to Make Your Electric Car Guitar Play Great. I think it's Dan Earlwine. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, of course, is all that stuff online? Absolutely. Available yeah. for free? Absolutely on YouTube. But it's nice to have that book there. Sure. Because, you know, I can flip through a quick and easy reference guide. I don't have to worry about what search terms right. that I want to put in. That's and true. then on top of that, it came with a little DVD that basically says, how do you set up a Strat? How do you set up a Les Paul style guitar? Mm -hmm. And I can throw that DVD in there. And he's a he's a pretty well-known guitar repairer, a uh, luthier. Oh yeah, and, I had a, a subscription to Guitar Player Magazine for years, and he was he had a column in there, and I loved reading that stuff. Yeah, and so you know that this guy knows what he's talking about, as opposed to random YouTube search that might be <laughs> might be somewhere like me giving you advice on how to repair a guitar. <laughs> Having said that, I think Dan has some stuff on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he probably does. Yeah, yeah you have to nowadays. To, yeah. So um, yeah, so like I said, if you're if you're new um, to guitar or you're getting to the point where you're maybe an intermediate player and you're like, you know what, I want to start doing my own setups or whatever, uh, don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. You you know you're unless you're careless and reckless, you're probably not going to wreck it. But if you have that nice guitar that you don't want to screw up, I think it's worthwhile dropping seventy five bucks. You know, eighty it's bucks. It's always good to have a beater guitar. Yeah, you know, and that way or you can 10. take it. Yeah, you can take it. You can play with your friends somewhere. You don't have to worry about taking your nice guitar to, you know, whatever, out in the road, put it in your car, whatever. Mm -hmm. So, definitely. Plus, it's always good, like you said, to have you know a good ten spare guitars. <laughs> That's right. Sometimes you just want to play something different, and then something different again, and then something. Yeah, I'm my... coming over to your place because they're just all there on the wall. I know, I know. <laughs> the problem is, is that my acquisition rate's been like two and a half guitars per year, which is kind of obscene. I got I, I, it's, this is definitely leveling off because, as you can see on the back wall, there's no more space unless I start a second row. And I can tell you why I'm not going to start a second row: laziness. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to drill all new holes in the wall. I have to. Spackle and paint. Nah, I don't want to do all of that. I'm just going to keep them the way they are. Sure. I my wife you. came. <laughs> well, my wife came in and said, "You know, you're out of room." I'm like, I know. <laughs> I've got. You can't see it right now, but I. Uh, I got, you can kind of see. It. I got two guitars on the floor in the corner back there. Uh -huh. You know, and I've got a three rack. You know, on the floor. It's like this has come out of hand. You come out of hand. So um, definitely need to. Maybe a monthly rotation. 
See? So a few go in cases. Yeah. A few go up on the wall. And then every, once a month, you just rotate a few out. I'm going to tell her you said that. It's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the blame. I've been taking the blame for your addiction for a couple of years now. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh gosh. So, um, well, let's see what we cover. We covered your guitar is coming back. I learned how to string a classical. Um, I have too many guitars, and everyone should learn how to do their own setups. That's most of what's important in this world. Yeah. Uh, we can we can move on to BB King at this point. Oh yeah, we should definitely move on to BB so King. So the, the special edition of uh, of uh, this Fortnite and guitar history is uh, well, history was just made on May fourteenth. BB uh, King passed away. Um, yeah, eighty nine years old and active pretty much until the end, which is amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, so of course, there's all kinds of uh, you know, go out to YouTube. Uh, there's tons of you know stuff out there uh the people have put up old concerts and stuff and old you know um kind of oh my vocabulary is gone but uh and and new stuff where people are um you know idolizing him and, and just playing his stuff and everything and it's it's cool you can see how big an influence he had on people so um yeah absolutely i mean he influenced tons of people uh and he has some just legendary songs. Mm -hmm. I mean, The Thrill is Gone is just a fun song to play. It is, yeah. I love playing that song. And uh, just listening to his music, and uh, he just, it's one of the best. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the sad thing is, is that we're losing these great blues players. That's true. You know, at, at a pretty good rate, because they're all old. Yeah. Um, we don't have too many left, so um, go out there and listen to the old greats. If they come to your town, you know, go definitely them while you still can. And uh, BB was one of them. I mean, we had the pleasure of seeing him together in concert, and then I saw him after a couple years after that. And uh, just one of my guitar heroes. I mean, I try. I like his sound. I like his tone. He's got that. You know when it's BB King. Right. Yeah. When you, you don't have to look at the radio and, and see who's playing. Right. When that song comes up, you know, it's BB. He's got that butterfly vibrato. Mm -hmm. There's that whole BB box. Yeah, that's you know, true. That he's, he's famous for playing in it's like six notes. And um, yeah, it's kind of a mixture of pentatonic, minor and major pentatonic. And just, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if there's much more to be said because I think everyone, everything's been said. Oh, yeah about him oh, he's influenced just, so many there's like i mean countless interviews and whatever i mean people just talking about his stuff and, and his style and how much he's uh, influenced their playing and uh you know i came to the bb sort of party <laughs> late but it's that's kind of cool too you know to yeah. see because you can sort of see okay this is where other heroes have gotten stuff too you know um so i'm sort of third generation influence you know which yeah. is interesting uh, but yeah, it, it's always sad, you know, something happens. But on the other hand, uh, what a life uh, well celebrated because um, it was so long and, and prolific, and especially with the the modest beginnings that he had and the life he led. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is no slight on him. I mean, honestly, the life of a musician is is gonna be, yeah. I um, think he did well. I think my favorite story about him though was how Lucille got its name. Yeah, you know, good. he was he was he was he was gigging at this bar. Uh, two guys get into a fight, knock over a lamp or oil lamp or whatever. Bar catches on fire. He runs back in to get the guitar, and then discovers later that the the woman they were fighting over a woman, and the woman's name was Lucille. What a great story! I mean, you know, yeah, I just, I, yeah, I have to say, I think the highest compliment I could ever get as a guitar player is if um, I was playing and somebody came into the room and said you know, playing BB King song and somebody said, Oh, I thought that was a recording. Yeah. That yeah. would be like the highest compliment I think I could get as a player. Work that vibrato brother. <laughs> no, you can't. I mean, he's, uh, he's the man when it comes to, to vibrato. It's just, and that tone, uh, I, I think I'd read a story about, um, basically him saying that he developed his tone so well because he really wanted to play slide. 
Mm-hmm. Cause you know, like, you know, in the fifties and stuff, that's what the, the blues guys, you know, your Elmore James, you know, you can go on and on and on. There were a lot of slide guitar was going on. Yeah. And he couldn't, he just, he could never get it down is what he claimed. Now, of course his crappy slide playing is probably far better than the best slide I'll ever play. Yeah. Right. But he just didn't feel like he was good enough for it. And so he got that vocal sounds out of his fingers, which is just amazing. That's always cool when you have a, uh... You kind of necessity is a mother invention or whatever where, you know, yeah, okay, I have this limitation. How can I do what's in my head a different way? Which actually it's it's funny because that's that's one of the things that always amazed me about Eddie Van Halen. That was one of the reasons, you know, more than the speed or whatever, that it was the inventiveness um, that I loved about his stuff. And, um, you know, if you look at the old, you know, David Lee Roth era stuff, I mean, there was always like one or two guitar pieces that were not really part of a song, but it was just him doing something weird (laughs) and it's like how did he do that you know and then when you find out how it was done it's kind of like oh (laughs) wouldn't have guessed that yeah i would do that right yeah yeah so and then he you know in interviews he'll explain it's like well i couldn't do this uh, but this is the sound i wanted so i did it this way Mm -hmm. so it's the same kind of thing and i bet that sort of story is um common you know in the more inventive players yeah not in some ways it's almost to their advantage to not have too much training. That's true. Right. Because, you know, when you're, when you're trained, then you're, you're sort of going back to this methodology over and over. You That's know, true. Over. Yeah. And if you're not trained, then it's sort of like, well, I'm going to make up how I do it. And it could be very creative and very inventive. What's funny about that is, um, yeah, I, I've heard, I can't remember who said it, but in one interview, um, it was something like, you know, you're known as much by the stuff you, you don't play as what you do play. And you could translate it into you're known as much by what you can't play <laughs> right. as what you can, you know. Um, right. But, yeah, that's phenomenal. And a lot of players are unconventional that way. I mean, Hendrix, you know, Stevie Ray, I mean, all these guys just sometimes for physical abilities, they have huge hands or they have a lot of finger strength, or whatever it is. But um, they end up doing things differently. And it makes... It makes it a different sound, different, you know, style. It makes it darn near impossible for some of us normal people. <laughs> yeah. Everyone then tries to like say, okay, I want to get the Stevie Ray Vaughan sound. Yeah. Well, you good know, luck with that. Why he had that sound and you're not Stevie. Yeah, it's true. And, and, you know, and so uh, you're going to have a different sound. Yeah, that's true. And that's okay. Um, but you know, everyone chases like, you know, the Jimmy sound, the Stevie sound or whatever the case might be and you know jimmy he he was left-handed mm-hmm. right so he strung his guitar upside down yep and that's going to get you a different you know um you know sound and you can go out and buy the stevie ray vaughn you know multi-thousand dollar guitar to probably not going to sound like him that's true what stevie did you know well hendrix had huge hands yeah. And uh, I mean, they were, I think, stapled on him from like some alien being. And then uh, Stevie had just strong hands. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. The bends that he did, I mean, he tuned down a little bit to bends that he did on, on 13s on the high E's. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't doing that. <laughs> He's a 12 on my acoustic. <laughs> I'm not bending like that. <laughs> I don't think I get some of those bends down with my 10s, but that's, uh, that's a whole other story. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, you know, back to, to BB, um, rest in peace, BB. Thank you for all the great music. Um, because there's a lot of people now who are, uh, you know, inspired or have been inspired by him that are playing and trying to, uh, his songs will live on. Indeed. You know, his songs will live on. So, Indeed. all right. Well, uh, I think that covers what we were going to talk about today. I think so. So uh, please, folks, if you like what you uh, heard, please click like or subscribe on YouTube. Um, You can also subscribe to us on iTunes. Please leave reviews, especially in iTunes. That helps us out uh, a lot. Um, Just let us know what you think. Uh, Until next time, folks, keep on picking and grinning. Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure is a production of Jester Cat Studios. You can see more about this and all other JesterCat shows at JesterCat.com. You can also email the show at SST at JesterCat.com or continue the conversation on Twitter at SST Show. You can follow Robert at RS Macy, Jesse at Jester700, and Chris at CW Culp. Thanks to Jesse for playing and recording our intro music. 